Clark Lee and Vandy football are an absolute fire in recruiting. You are Locked On Vandy, your daily podcast on the Vanderbilt Commodores, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome in to the Locked On Vandy podcast on the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Corey Burton. Thanks for making Locked On Vandy your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube as a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college terms and conditions apply. Well, on today's episode, the Vandy boys land a pair of pitching transfers, but first Clark Lee and his staff is on fire in recruiting. They land a pair of commits five in the last week to bring the overall total to 10. This time it's offensive lineman, Matthew Perry and cornerback Caden Daniels. Let's start with Matthew Parker. Okay. All right. Uh, massive offensive lineman, huge get for a team that desperately needs to build depth at that position. I mean, Vandy, despite the additions in the portal, are, are a little more thin at that position than they'd really like to be. With Parker, you get an imposing tackle prospects that will help maintain the, the identity that they want to have, the physical run team identity that they desire to be. Also, it's you know, everything that they want to do in the run game, uh, everything that he brings to the table, size, you know, being able to come in and then just be physically imposing is exactly what this Vanderbilt offense needs and exactly what this run game needs that that they want to uh, that they want to have. They need they were especially thin at tackle the tackle positions. Uh, Matthew Parker brings that to the table. He brings depth to to that position. Interior linemen, they have more uh, interior linemen than they do tackles right now. And I am a huge fan of this of this uh, of this pickup. I, I think what what he adds to the fray. I mean, just being six eight, three hundred pounds, I think adds a little bit more in pass protection as well. Just because it, he's so tall and long and got such a long reach that I think that you you're able to do some things in the pass game as well that will uh, will help you move the ball down the field and also getting a guy of this caliber I mean he, he had offer he had an offer from Florida State Houston probably will rack up some more offers before it's all said and done I think he's going to be pretty solid though but um, just being able to get a guy like this has to give you confidence in what you're doing recruiting has to give you confidence in what you're doing scheme wise. Like, I think honestly, I think Vandy has found something here with this most recent overhaul. And, and I know, I know this is the time of year to say all of that. This is the time of year to be positive. This is, this is when everybody's going to be conference champions and, you know, this, that, and the other. And, you know, Vandy is, you know, we can, we can say Vandy's going to a bowl game. Vandy's going to win eight games. Vandy's going to win this game, this game, this game, and this game. Right. And you don't really know year, year in and year out, honestly, what's going to happen. But like, I, I think everything that's happened in the off season leading up to this moment with the change in philosophy, hiring Clark, you know, Clark Lee appointing himself as defensive coordinator, uh, hiring Tim Beck and Jerry Kilder on the offense, hiring uh, Robbie Steiner to run the strength program, uh, getting a bunch of transfers, participating in NIL, uh, you know, just move after move after move, you know, getting a four, you know, getting a elite quarterback uh, prospect, a guy that tad undersized, but like he's, he's winning some of these quarterback camps, um, you know, he's winning MVP awards and stuff like that. You get a four star commit out of Macaulay. You're going to have to fight for your life to keep him uh, because he's getting offers from everywhere and it's going to be tempting. Um, but he hasn't committed anywhere else yet. And and I imagine it's going to, you know, it's going to come down to the end for that one. Um, but like, you know, with any great recruiting battle or with any great recruit, you're going to have to fight off schools and is something that they're not unaccustomed to. So, you know, there, there's that. But, you know, it, it just, you know, it just feels different this year. And and you can tell they've had 10 commits, which I don't think they, you know, at this point, and I, I know I said this in every episode that we've had a commit, but like, I don't think they've been able to say, Hey, we've had this many commits 
at this time. And right now that number's up to 10. They've had five in the last week. Um, and and that the, the number just keeps growing. I think there's going to be one more down the pike. Uh, Caden Daniels was one that uh, I didn't expect to, to commit. Uh, Matthew Parker was one that I thought, given the depth at his position uh, and given the fact that um, what Vandy does offensively fits right into what he does well, not surprised that he committed. I, I think it's a good move for him uh, to get in the SEC, to get to a team that fits his identity, which is big, physical, imposing, uh, just pancaking people, uh, very dominant in the run game uh, with, with him. And uh, you know, I think that fits him to, to a T. So, um, but one thing that really kind of stood out to me, one thing that was interesting that, you know, I've been talking about this overhaul all year long when I, I've had Kurt Page on, I think three times, three, four times now. And we've talked about the overhaul. We've talked about what's happening, what the philosophy, the culture, you know, things that are things that are taking place, the improvements that have been made, the identities, you know, in the weight room, we're going to be we're going to be physical. We're going to be competitive. We're going to be sh- bigger, stronger, faster. We're going to take we're going to take uh, we're going to put importance into nutrition. OK, offensively, we're going to be a physical dominant run team that fits Matthew Parker's style, by the way. All right. That's going to be able to push the ball downfield when we need to. But we're going to rely on on variations of the run game to get the ball moving and, and to chew up the clock and to control possession. Defensively, we're going to fly around. We're going to we're going to blanket you on the back end and allow allow our defensive front to grow in personnel as well as being able to be more aggressive and be more uh, and be able to get home on some of these blitzes that, that are going to take place. So, and then also the emphasis that has been taken on special teams as well. So I think there's a lot of things that, that are happening within this program that have led, that have led me to believe and that have led, I think a lot, a lot of Andy supporters, the ones that are paying attention at least to believe that something's happening right? This is not the two and 10 team that we last saw in November. The team that almost got into a bench clearing brawl against Tennessee, the team that looked pitiful against UNLV, the team that barely beat Hawaii, the team that just was non-competitive in every game they played a year ago. This is not that team, right? This is not what we, what we're seeing. And I think when you have Matthew Parker saying things like this, I think that puts a little bit of credibility to that notion. And he said, quote, what stood out the most during my visit was the new coaching staff at Vanderbilt right now. Clark Lee has brought in some guys with history of winning to take over his offense that will allow him to settle in more on the defensive side of the ball. All the pieces of this team are being put together, and I think Vandy will develop a winning culture in the next few years. Also, the education is top tier as well. I think that quote really kind of sums up what we've been talking about. The education obviously has always been top tier, so that's nothing new. Uh, but I think the other stuff that precedes that, right? Clark Lee brought in some guys with a history of winning to take over his offense, so allow him to settle in on the defensive side of the ball. I think he sees a need there. I think he sees an opportunity with with a former head coach, Jerry Kill, who the only reason that he was available is because of health issues, not because of his lack of performance as a head coach. That is exciting to see. Uh, I think that will be a monster piece uh, before it's all said and done. You know, I, I think that the winning culture is the fact that recruiting they're they're they built the recruiting staff they put an emphasis on that and you're seeing the results of that you're you're going to see a bigger stronger faster team that hopefully knock on wood has less injuries and be able to maintain peak performance throughout the course of a ball game and not tucker out midway through the third quarter so you know you're you're seeing a lot of things that are going to that are going to lend uh, Vanderbilt to be able to win some football games down the road. I think you're building a culture on top of that that's going to be able to sustain. I, you know, and and this again, this quote right here from Matthew Parker, photo credit to Rivals.com, by the way. Um, that um, you know, this quote really just kind of puts everything into perspective, right? It it reinforces the fact that Clark Lee found a need for change. Unfortunately, it was an abysmal need for change. Unfortunately, it was one of those things where, I mean, it was so bad that, you know, you couldn't help but change. It was either 
it was either change something or we're going to change head coaches. I, I think it came down to that point, and, and he was this close to getting fired, right? But nonetheless, it's happened, and I think it's for the betterment. I think it's for the better. I think you're getting recruits now because you have an identity, because you know this is what we want to do on defense. This is what we want to do on offense. You're finding guys that will tr- that will – contribute in special teams down the road, right? You're, you're starting to see that. And this is all part of the culture change. And I am absolutely here for it, right? You have, uh, you have Cameron Dixon, return game. Gabe Fields, return game, right? Van Zale Hinton, possibly a returner, right? There's, there's, some, there's some really good things happening. You have guys... That I I also don't think this has happened for for Vanderbilt. You have guys recruiting for Vanderbilt. You have Austin Howard out here becoming the lead recruiter. He came on this official visit. <laughs> Next thing you know, two guys commit. Probably another guy on the way. Uh, we'll talk about him in a little bit. But like you're up to ten commits, and everyone that that visits Vanderbilt says this is happening. They are different. There's there's something different in the air, and and I think some of the the way some of these quotes are worded. I don't think I don't think it's just a commit. Uh, I don't think it's a recruit just trying to be nice and and trying to be professional. I think there's something to it. So just uh, just keep that in mind um, as we go. Um, but uh, I mean, this isn't the only recruit. This isn't the only commit. Uh, Caden Daniels is an amazing commitment on the defensive side of the ball. We're going to break him down next. This episode is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just a job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job but might be open to the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're simply looking in the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. You know why? Because LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time or resources to hire. LinkedIn is constantly finding ways to make the process easier. They even just launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions, thus making the process even easier and quicker. Did you know 2.5 million small businesses use LinkedIn for hiring? Well, now you do. So this is what you need to do. You need to post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. All right. Welcome back. Locked on Vandy. Listen, are you watching ESPN or Fox Sports? Are you, do you have to turn down your TV because of all of that shouting? Well, this is what you need to do. You need to make the switch to Locked On Sports today. It's a free 24-7 streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So talking about commits, dude, like Clark Lee and Vanderbilt football is on absolute fire, Okay. They are on fire. And again, this is this is the payoff for overhauling your recruiting staff. You know, this is this is what you get, right? You 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 overhaul it, you you bolster it, you you add pieces, you 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 pump money into it, you start to participate in NIL, you start to put an emphasis on recruiting. Like you you understand, you're starting to understand what it takes to recruit in this league. And I don't, I don't, I mean, I'm not saying that you did, I'm not saying that they didn't understand it before they may have and may, may not have been able to do anything about it really. 
now that they're starting to be able to figure this thing out and say, hey, we need a bigger recruiting staff if we're going to have a chance. You know, you can't fire me with two people in my recruiting staff and no NIL. Like, you, that's like it's unfair, right? So we have to do this thing. We have to do this thing the right way. And that they are. So you get Matthew Parker, who on offense, you know, the only reason, the only reason I led the show with him is because he is a massive piece to a to a position group that is in big time need. Offensive tackle is that position group that is in big time need. So um he is no, you know, I, I think this one is equally as as good. Of, of a get, I, I, I'm really excited about Caden Daniels. Uh, he he's a defensive back commit. He's a corner commit from Crisp County down in South Georgia, Cordial. Um, so it's uh, you know, again, it, it's one of those positions where I think you know Clark Lee is is putting another emphasis on uh, on defense. I, I think you're starting to kind of see okay, if I build really good lockdown corners it's going to allow me to do things on the front end because, Hey, I, I know these guys can cover. I know these guys are going to make plays. He's got some electric type guys, six foot one. He's getting a lot bigger, longer, stronger uh, at that position. I mean, you, you're seeing it with, with the guys that he's bringing in. You're seeing it with, um, you know, Cole, you know, Colby Taylor, who's six foot four. I mean, that, I mean, you're, you're, you're getting, you're getting immediately bigger um, at those positions. You know, you're, you're getting, uh, you're getting longer, you're getting faster at those positions. So it's uh it's good. You know, you have a six footer and Martell height, you know, you're getting, you know, it's just a need to be taller at those positions because you have to, you have to, to compete with these receivers that, that you're going up against. And so you're uh, you know, you're looking at that as a, you know, you're looking at that as something that's going to be uh, much needed down the stretch, physicality wise and everything. And and when you look at what Caden Daniels brings to the table, yes, he brings that long physical stature uh, to to the plate. He can play corner. He can play safety. He's versatile. He can play in the in the slot. He can cover just about anybody. But um, what I really, what really stood out to me when I watched his film, and I, you know, when you look at the film on some of these guys, and I, you know, I used to work for Rivals.com, so I've kind of seen a lot of five star, four star, three star, two star guys, and sometimes, honestly, the only separator is physical attributes like height, like. Uh, like there might be like a tenth of a second off on their 40 time. Like they might just because they play in the middle of nowhere in some random state that doesn't get a whole lot of attention. Like there's some, there's some factors here when you're evaluating high school talent. I mean, South Georgia is a pretty, pretty common place. This guy's pretty good. He might be, you know, judging from on, on film, he, he might be, you know, the difference between him being a four star and a, and a, and a three star is probably just his, you know, he can he can really just kind of improve his uh, overall burst and acceleration. Um, I, I think that would probably, if I'm nitpicking, that would probably be the thing that I would say. But I mean, the guy is really good in coverage. He's he's good at he's good at using his hands to to kind of gain an advantage on on these on these receivers. He's good. Uh, you know, his the second clip of his huddle highlights. You know, he. Uh, he baits the quarterback. What I really like is he's he's smart, and this show this shows his uh, his football intelligence. But he uh, he baits the he baits the quarterback into throwing the ball down the sideline because it he makes it look like he's in man coverage and he's running with the receiver. Then he peels off, and the receiver he makes the receiver feel like he's open. Then he peels off and goes and makes the interception. Right? Um, he's physical at the point of attack. Uh, I really like that. Like I said, he uses his hands very, very well uh, to keep position and to keep that edge. Um, you know, he's going to force he's going to force the, the 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 official to throw the pass interference flags. He's going to be physical. He's going to jostle you um, at the line of scrimmage. He's going to, you know, that's his goal. You know, he's uh, he's somebody that can get in your face and and press cover. He's somebody that's smart enough to understand how to manipulate zone coverages to bait the quarterback into throwing the ball his way. Um, he's got good eye, di- eye discipline. Um, 
in in man coverage where he knows exactly kind of when to to break on the ball because you know I think it's one of those things where he has to you know being being the type of player that he is he has to understand these things and he has to understand the technical aspects of these things because I don't think he's an absolute speedster I mean he's he's fast don't get me wrong he's way faster than me so don't don't t- don't take it like I'm saying that he's slow cuz I'm definitely not um, but he's somebody that I, I think in a league that that features speed and, and a level of football that's going to feature speed, A, he's going to need to work on uh, improving his speed. But B, I, I think him being overall great in technique, using his hands to kind of slow down receivers, things like that, using positioning, using leverage, using uh, using field position, alignment, things like that, that helps him with the fact that he can uh, – that he can stay in coverage and that he can stay in uh, in phase with the with the receiver. So it's uh, it's gonna be exciting to kind of watch him play. Um, I, I don't know exactly what Vandy wants from him at the next level. If they want him to play corner, or if they want him to sit back and play safety, he's tall, he's long, he can certainly play the cornerback position. He can certainly handle that. Um, it'll, it remains to be seen because he's listed on rivals as a safety uh, prospect. Um, and he's somebody that's definitely good at coming off the edge um, when, when the team presents a nub, nub side formation. But um, again, I like this guy's athleticism. I like his football intelligence. I like the fact that he uses his hands, his leverage, and and things like that to, to keep himself in leverage or in, in phase. I like the way he plays this game, man. And I'm, I'm a big fan of his. And I, I think he's going to do some special things at Vanderbilt. And, and this is another key piece to to Clark Lee's defense. And this is going to be nothing short of amazing here. I think you guys are going to have fun with this one. All right, some of the quotes he said, um, some of the quotes he said when talked about his uh, official visit, and this is from VandySports.com. Uh, he said, Vanderbilt was amazing. I love the atmosphere, the brotherhood, and the culture up there. It's wonderful. Coach Lee has a plan for my development, and I'm with that. He likes that I'm mobile, I'm long, and I got good speed and long range. I can play all over the field. They can use me wherever they need me. There's that key word, versatility. So Clark Lee has a plan. Clark Lee has got you know elite recruiting for that. So I'm, I'm with it. Okay, Daniels is with it, all that good stuff. Is Nick Moore next? Be another huge addition, literally and figuratively. He's next, right? He's got to be. He's got to be. He's got to be, right? Keep working on him. Big time defensive lineman there. I think he's next. He's coming. He loved it. He said he loved the atmosphere. How couldn't you? I mean, the other the other two guys you went on the official visit with committed, um, and then the third guy was obviously already committed and, and recruiting for the school. So, um, you know, it's uh, how could you not commit at that point, right? And they need defensive linemen. They need big time playmakers at that spot too. So Nick Moore, come on, you're next. I'm calling it, Nick Moore. In 24 hours, maybe he'll. I hope he doesn't break my streak here. I'm on a pretty good streak of of calling the timing of these commits. So Nick Moore, you're next. All right. And you know what else is next? Well, the Vandy boys they they got a little bit jealous of all this recruiting stuff and all these signees and things like that. They wanted to get in on the action, too. We'll talk about what that means next. All right, this episode is also brought to you by FanDuel. You know what summertime means? It means baseball, NBA finals, NHL finals, and more. And you can bet it all on FanDuel. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. FanDuel's hooking you guys up, dude. It was 150 last week. Now it's 200. That's 200 bucks you can use to bet everything from the finals MVP to who's going to hit one out of the park. Is 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 it the time? Is it time for the Florida Panthers? Is the Edmonton Oilers going to break through? Connor McDavid. What's going to happen in the NHL? Right. You got all that to bet on. So visit fanduel.com slash locked on and win big and and add a big win to your summer bucket list. That's FanDuel, America's number one sports book. 
Woo, wrapping up the show here. Welcome back, Locked On Vandy. Uh, this is the greatest show in the SEC. I believe that. Um, we just got to get you guys to prove it, right? Um, but uh, in, in all seriousness, thanks for making us your first listen each and every day. You know who does it really well right now is Locked On SEC with Chris Gordy, Locked On Ole Miss with Stephen Willis, uh, Locked On Auburn with Zach Blackerby, like, the other shows in the conference do it really well. And if you want to be one of the most educated fan bases in the country, check out those shows as well. Get informed and know what's going on with the rest of the people in the conference. That way you can be like, well, you know, that way you can back up, you know, your reasoning of why we're going to beat South Carolina or, you know, why Virginia tech can't has no chance now, or, you know, yada, yada, yada on down the list. Right. You'll know why you'll be like, well, Texas is trash because, Quinn Ewers is going to lose the quarterback job. That's not really going to happen. I'm just giving you an example, right? So, thanks. Like I said, thanks for making Locked On Vandy your first listen each and every day. Shout out to the everydayers. Now, as we wrap up the show, the Vandy boys they said, you know what? Vandy baseball said, you know what? I just don't want to be left out. So, here's what they did: they went to the portal. All right, started with sophomore pitcher Cody Bowker from Georgetown. He was. He was the main Gatorade player of the year in 2022. Um, coming out of high school, he shows up to Georgetown. Um, he posts a 2.57 ERA in 42 innings. And then this past season, he was 5-1 and one with a 3.0 ERA. He was second team all Big East um, in uh, in pitching. So, man, I am, I am loving this right here. I think he's going to add uh, – I think he's going to add a big-time boost to uh, – to the staff and and something that, you know, pitching depth is something that you can never have too much of, right? You know, some of these teams have learned that the hard way. Georgia just learned that the hard way. Um, you know, these teams that got knocked out in the super regionals and super regionals that we thought might make a run to Omaha found out the hard way that having good pitching is key. Tennessee almost found out the hard way. Evansville just ran out of gas. Uh, they almost found out the hard way too, and you have to have a good bullpen. You have to have good pitching, and because guys are going to get hurt with with baseball the way it's being played year round now, things are going to happen. Arms are going to get worn out. You're going to need, you know, Vanderbilt to make the run they did to the to the regionals. They needed guys that at the beginning of the season they thought were going to be midweek guys. Maybe some appearances out of the bullpen, but not much more than that. Became one of your best pitchers down the stretch. So you never know what, what could happen with that. Tommy O'Rourke is the second one. He's a grad transfer from Stanford. He was, uh, you know, he comes from uh, their bullpen. He, uh, you know, he's had some injuries. He's been banged up, so it's a little bit more risk. But he has a career 4.26 ERA, which is pretty good when you consider how college baseball is played and how bullpens are very, very fickle. So these are two great additions uh, to the pitching staff. And I think we'll add a lot um, and we'll add a lot to the arsenal that Tim Corbin can, can, can bring out there, can trot out there and he can say, okay, well, um, you know, Tommy O'Rourke, you know, sixth and seventh inning are yours. Go get them, go shut them down. And I think he could probably do it. Stanford is not a, not one of those slappy programs that, you know, are, you know, they just, you know, they're just a feeder system to nothing, right? Stanford's a pretty prestigious program. They've got a lot of history, a lot of pedigree. So this guy's got to be decent, right? Um, but we just don't know how he's going to respond to injury. And I, I think that's the only concern, which is a legitimate concern, valid concern. So um, Vandy boys getting in on the action, hired a new hitting coach, who's also been a really good recruiter at Dayton and also um, getting two pitching transfers all in that all within a, all within less than a week of, of letting go your hitting your previous hitting coach and recruiting coordinator. So pretty, pretty solid stuff. Also a uh, shout out to basketball, hearing some great, great things from, from basketball. They started their off season workouts. AJ Hoggard is, uh, a, you know, outstanding right now he is um he's the real deal he he's going to be the guy that's going to take over the team um he's going to be the kind of the juice guy the you know the the the, the i guess 
if I want to use an idiom, the straw that stirs the drink. Um, and, uh, you know, also, uh, Edwards is going to be, uh, Tyler Edwards is going to be somebody that is, uh, he's going to be, he's going to be, uh, he's gonna be tough to guard Tyler nickel, um, doing what he's doing. MJ Collins. I mean, everybody's just, I mean, again, everybody's just trying to get to know each other and it's just summer workouts at this point, but like, I think you're seeing some promise here and, uh, we'll talk more about it, um, as we, as we kind of go on through the summer, but like, um, you know, this Vanderbilt basketball team is, you know, they overhauled their roster. That seems to be a theme around, around the university right now. Overhaul, right. You know, brand new. Let's, let's, let's wipe out everything. Let's start over. Let's start fresh. So, um, last and certainly not least before I go, I'd be remiss if I didn't give a shout out to Vandy track and field and, uh, Veronica Fraley for, uh, winning gold at, and uh, she uh, throwing the discus, man, just outstanding winning uh, and the NCAA championships, you know, winning her event. Uh, that was uh, that was amazing there. So shout out to uh, shout out to her and shout out to the track team for uh, for doing what they're doing. So anyway, we're going to leave you there. We hope you have a great rest of your Tuesday. We'll see you back here tomorrow on the Lockdown Vandy podcast on the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Behave yourselves and, of course, anchor down.